Hello, my dear doctors. So, uh, today I will talk a bit about the MRCPHC abdominal station and uh, we're going to talk a bit about this chronic liver disease. And uh, this is a very common case in the abdominal station. In fact, there are not many cases which you come across in your abdominal station. Um, Sometimes you can have uh, chronic liver disease, maybe have renal transplant, or sometimes maybe have an isolated splenomegaly or hepatomegaly. So these are the common cases which you can uh, see uh, in the abdominal station. So let's talk briefly about the uh, chronic liver disease. So if you came across the, this station, actually, uh, as as I told you in the cardiology station also, the first thing we have to do is good inspection. And by doing the good inspection, take around 30 seconds to 40 seconds or maybe a minute to look around if there's any clues there and then stand at the end of the bed and just look at the patient and look for any any signs which can lead you to the diagnosis. So on inspection, what we are looking at. So just see if the patient is malnourished or the patient has an is icteric or jaundice. Uh, you can also uh, look for any spider nevi. Once you find the spider nevi, then you got your diagnosis already. And then you look at the hands. And hence, what you are mainly looking for, you are looking for any Dupuytren's contracture. So it is here, you can see the thickening of the, uh, this is, uh, and you can, you can appreciate there is thickening there. And this is uh, thick, thickening actually, uh, usually at the ulna side with a bit of flexion of the little finger and the ring finger. The other thing you can find is, uh, uh, palmar erythema and this is just the redness here you can see this the redness is there so this is palmar erythema and this one you will find on inspection and these are the spider nevis which and maybe you have multiple spider nevis and normally they are above the nipple line you can see at the front as well as look at the back of the patient to look for this spider nevi okay and then uh, the other uh, things which you look for in your inspection is whether the patient has any gynecomastia and uh, finally uh, we also uh, see whether the patient got any abdominal distension and you look at the umbilicus whether it is everted or uh, usually it is everted the umbilicus is everted in the Abdominal grossly distended with the prominent abdominal veins. So that will give you a clue about the SITs. So once you have done a good inspection of the patient, you already have your diagnosis already that this patient has a chronic liver disease. But still, you have to do a complete abdominal examination. So abdominal examination, obviously, you are going to start with the um, uh, inspection and uh, if you are done already, just look closely again at the abdomen. You don't miss any any findings there. Um, inspection. One important uh, thing is uh, look for any scars. Also, they may be sometimes got uh, uh, scars because of the tapping of the ascites. They may be scar uh, because of the taking the hepatic biopsy. So, if you can appreciate those scars, just you're going to mention in your presentation. So what else, uh, we, then after the inspection, good inspection, you will start doing the palpation, superficial palpation, deep palpation, and then looking for any uh, organomegaly, and there we are talking about any liver enlargement or any spleen enlargement as well. Okay, so obviously going to look for the SITs and you're going to do the shifting dullness as well. Um, Okay, so then um, you have to look for the etiology. There are some clues which can give you some idea about what is the etiology. Uh, like suppose 
if you see the patient got is female, middle aged female, and the patient has xanthalismus, and plus xanthalismus, there is excoriation signs because of the scratching, then you will be thinking about this could be primary biliary cirrhosis. Now it is called primary biliary cholangitis. The other etiology, if you came across uh, the patient and patient has some bronze skin and some, some needle marks, then you may think that patient could have uh, hemochromatosis. So this is a clue with, uh, for the etiology. And if you find any KF rings, then it is likely to be Wilson's disease. Although AKF ring is difficult to appreciate, usually you need the slit lamp, but sometimes you can see them. Okay, so that was all about your examination. And how are you going to work up the patient with the uh, uh, chronic liver disease? Obviously, you, you need a good history. Social history is very important in these patients because you want to know whether the patient has any history of alcohol intake. You know that alcohol uh, is the uh, top um, cause of the uh, chronic liver disease, especially in the Western world. And obviously we have to do some blood tests. So blood tests will be obviously doing the full uh, liver screen along with the full blood count and uh, clotting. We also will do the ultrasonography to confirm our diagnosis of petomegaly, uh, splenomegaly, and for the SITs. And uh, if the patient has any, any history of bleeding, then we do the endoscopy as well. Okay, so this was briefly about the uh, how do we will approach like examination of the patient, inspection, and what signs to look for. Now we come. I briefly will talk about the presentation. So once they, you'll have six minutes to do mm, your examination and everything, and after that you have to do a good presentation. So presentation normally I will divide it into you. You have to tell your uh, findings as you found it. So uh, you can say that on general inspection I noticed that the patient is malnourished. On examination I I also noticed that the patient has an abdominal distension. Examination of the hands I appreciated uh, patient has dupuytren contracture, palmar edema, they also spider nevi. So these the few few lines which you talk about the general inspection. The second part of presentation will be your abdominal findings. So abdominal examination findings like uh, if you came across any SITs, abdominal distension or if the patient has a hepatomegaly or splenomegaly or SITs. Just mention it and when you talk about hepatomegaly, it's best to do, do the liver span and tell that how much um, two fingers, three fingers liver enlarge and just briefly about whether the edges are nodular or is smooth or and uh, splenomegaly if you also can tell whether it is uh, how much it is enlarged and so that one will be good. Okay, so then uh, very very important that uh, you in your presentation you will uh, tell the patient whether this chronic liver disease is decompensated or compensated. Normally they will ask whether this patient has a decompensated liver disease or compensated liver disease. So remember that uh, if we say that the patient has uh, decompensated liver disease then they are, the patient is quite sick actually. They got Usually they have splenomegaly, they have SITs, patient may have encephalopathy, jaundice. So these are all signs of decompensation. Okay. And finally, in your presentation point, you will say, I like to finish my examination. So what, what else you want to do? So obviously you want to finish your examination by doing the uh, full set of uh, uh, observation which includes checking the patient vitals and uh, obviously um, vitals like pulse, blood pressure, temperature and you go will do the full liver screen. So full liver screen means uh, doing all the blood tests and do, uh, doing some scanning as well, ultrasonography and maybe if the history suggests there is some bleeding, a history of any bleeding or 
uh, hematemesis, then you want to do the OGD as well. So you, 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 you have to do like this. So remember your presentation is very, very important. So just remember these signs, uh, these, uh, that just break it up, your presentation with the general inspection, then you talk about the abdominal examination findings. You briefly mention whether the uh, liver disease is decompensated or compensated. And finally, uh, concluding, you would like to say, I'd like to finish my examination by doing the full set of observation, full liver screen, scanning, as well as OHD. Okay. So that, that is all about the presentation. So just uh, in your examination, try to be systematic and um, don't rush with your uh, presentation. Just do it in parts, slowly, uh, so the examiner can understand uh, what findings you have picked up. Okay. So then after this, there will be maybe three minutes left. So examiner may ask you some questions. So normally they will ask the most uh, common question is whether this patient has a decompensated or compensated liver disease. So that one we have, uh, we have already discussed. Then the other questions, I'll briefly put the questions here for you. So the other questions they usually ask is uh, what are the consequences of uh, chronic liver disease? So consequences of chronic liver disease, you can say that the uh, patient will end up having portal hypertension and portal hypertension which can lead to esophageal varices and that can lead to hematemesis and bleeding. Okay. And what at our tells, because if the liver is involved with the production of protein, so there is failure of protein production, failure of protein production, and uh, beside this, uh, um, there can be uh, coagulopathy and encephalopathy. Okay, and uh, other comp other consequences of colon disease: the patient has cystitis, the patient has a hand candela subacute bacterial peritonitis. And finally, the other complication of the disease of uh, chronic liver disease is hepatocellular carcinoma. Okay. So this is the question they normally ask, what are the consequences? So just be prepare yourself, do some mental uh, a bit of uh, rehearsal that how are you going to uh, answer this question. Um, another favorite question is they will ask what, what are the causes of chronic liver disease? And I'm sure you all are aware of it that the cause is the most common cause is alcohol. And then we have some hepatitis B viruses and hepatitis C virus. And then we have uh, others like uh, um, uh, drugs related. And uh, it can be because of the uh, non-alcoholic uh, non uh, liver disease, non-alcoholic fatty liver disease. And uh, finally, the chronic liver disease, there are autoimmune causes, which include uh, autoimmune hepatitis, and along with it, uh, primary biliary cirrhosis, now called primary biliary cholangitis, primary sclerosing cholangitis, and the rare causes, which include alpha-1 antitrypsin deficiency. Okay. So, just remember uh, your causes because that is a very favorite question of the examiner then they will be asked you okay how are you going to manage the patient so the management of uh, the patients with the uh, chronic liver disease actually depends on the first of all you say i'll try to treat the underlying etiology first so by mean the by underlying etiology if the patient has uh, the chronic liver disease because of the alcohol you want to uh, advise the patient to stop taking alcohol and similarly if they got uh, chronic liver disease because of some hepatitis B virus or V or C virus then uh, maybe some antiviral treatment can be pres uh, prescribed. Other part of the management of the chronic liver disease is hepatocellular carcinoma screening and this is very important because uh, one of the leading cause of hepatocellular carcinoma is chronic liver disease normally because of the hepatitis C virus. If got patient, if patient has any SITs, then we want to manage the SITs. So you start with normally with diuretics and 
uh, uh, with the uh, fluid restriction spinolactone to start with and then we can maybe add uh, uh, frusamide and uh, sometimes if it is uh, uh, really uh, really bad then maybe have to do parasynthesis uh, uh, also we fluid the uh, remove the fluid uh, under the albumin cover okay then there is a general uh, nutritional support to the patient which is needed and finally uh, in the management just mentioned that uh, we can do the liver transplant provided all the criteria are met okay so these are the normal questions which are consequences causes management and then they will ask you about do you know any any scores or any how you'll know which patient you'll send to the uh, for the uh, liver transplant and things so remember that for the severity they normally ask about this child poo score and child poo score is uh, actually uh, they will not go into very much detail if you just mention this uh, i'm aware of the child poo score which gives us about the severity gives us an idea about the severity of chronic liver disease. It, it has actually five components. Um, two, you can assess uh, clinically like uh, SITs and encephalopathy. And others are the um, uh, lab findings, uh, like you want to know about the patient albumin, you want to know about the INR and bilirubin. So this will give us some idea and the higher the score, the worse is the prognosis. And then another score which you should be aware of is the MELD score, MEDRI and stage liver disease score. And it will also give us some idea about the uh, chronicity of the liver disease. Okay, now just briefly about sometimes they will ask, okay, the what is the management of the very cell bleeding? So again, just keep it basic that we li like to do some fluid, re fluid resuscitation. Patient may require prophylactic antibiotics and we have to give some uh, like uh, um, terlipressin and um, patient also needs some proton pump inhibitors usually it is given infusion maybe if it is if needed then we can do some blood transfusion as well but however the the final management um, or the definite management for the varicell bleeding is go to send the patient for the endoscopy and do the varicell bleed uh, varicell bending scleroscopy therapy is not done now anymore so normally we do the bending so these these are the normal questions which they ask uh, in um, abdominal station if you come across chronic liver disease. So uh, hopefully uh, you will have some idea. Uh, so my advice is uh, just be confident and be systematic. And it's not a very um, uh, really a very difficult exam. The only thing is if you are clear in your mind and uh, you are systematic, then it will be very easy for you. Thank you very much and uh, sure I'm going to make uh, more videos about other abdominal station as well. Thank you and take care.